you've got a huge amount of experience. So you jump in and you create 01.ai. Uh, so what's the background there? Yeah, in 01.ai, we realized we were way behind OpenAI. We were perhaps seven years behind when we founded it uh, 17 months ago. It was only 17 okay. months ago. And I didn't have a team of engineers. I had to it used the first four or five months to hire people. Um, but, but even with that, um, basically the playbook that I took was from my own book, AI Superpowers. We said, sure. we're not going to beat OpenAI at their own game. Can we build things very quickly? Uh, sometimes the most um, challenging part of building something is proving a, an unknown idea to be feasible, which ChatGPT had done which GBD4 and GBD40 and now GBD01 have done, and that with the, the, the leaders in research demonstrating that something is feasible, that is all we need to know. Because when someone uh, builds a nuclear bomb or puts a man on the moon, uh, for others to do it is much, much easier because empirically it had been demonstrated. So sure. we were just saying, now we just have to be more diligent, read more papers, um, and work harder around the clock and leverage the strength that we have as Chinese entrepreneurs and engineers and just go 996 or longer if needed um, <laughs> until we get to products that are competitive and, and, and efficient, right? Because we probably can't win on accuracy, but can we make the equally accurate product much cheaper, cheaper to train, cheaper to inference, cheaper to train because we're poor. We don't have the 50 billion or $5 billion um, uh, Sam Altman talked about and cheap to inference because we want apps to run lightning fast. And, and that is what it would take for adoption because you want fast and low cost of inference. And in the last 17 months, we achieved all that. So you just said something that's fascinating, which is access to compute. I mean, I think everybody... Uh, imagines China has huge infinite resources, but it hasn't been the case in terms of, uh, of of GPUs. And does that does that scarcity of resources cause you to think differently and not be lazy or to be more innovative? Uh, yes, um, one is just the difficulty of acquiring GPUs given the yeah. U.S. restrictions, but also we only raised a small amount of money, so we couldn't afford. Uh, uh, you know, 10,000 GPUs anyway. Right. And basically everything we've done, um, we did production runs on only 2,000 GPUs, which is um, a small fraction of uh, what the uh, U.S. companies are using. Elon Musk just put together 100,000 H100s and um, OpenAI Impre impressive, Google have huh? even more. <laughs> it's impressive, but we have yeah. basically, you know, less than 2% of their compute. But I'm a deep believer in efficiency, power of engineering, small teams working together, vertical integration. And we, uh, I also, I'm, I'm, strong, I'm a strong believer that necessity is the mother of innovation. So yeah. I have a team. I told them, all we got is 2,000 GPUs. We don't have 100,000. I don't need you to, you know, invent the GPT-5. I want you to take a look at GPT-4, GPT-4.0, and can we match that in, the, in 12 months, in, in five months? And, and can, in the process of making it, all we have is 2,000 GPUs. You don't have a lot of compute. And when you make it, by the way, if you train it in, in very efficiently, we can also, can we also have an inference that's very efficient, calling, costing only a few percent to run it in apps? 